Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 25th. It's rainy here. Uh, beautiful morning, temperature-wise. I uh, just wish it wasn't uh, raining. Scattered thunderstorms the rest of the day today. C'est la vie. We got plenty of uh, indoor fun planned for the day. So, uh, Smoking my Stan Nikowski pipe. Thank you, Christian. Love this pipe. And it's filled with haunted bookshop. You know, I was gonna smoke something different. You know, it's like this shirt I'm wearing. My wife hates it when I wear this shirt. Although, granted, I've got other shirts that she hates more, but she hates it when I wear this shirt. In her opinion, this shirt should have been thrown away. Um, and I got up this morning, you know, I got showered and everything, and, and when I'm looking at the pile of shirts and I've got a pile of shirts that you know she bought for me within well, I've worn maybe once or twice and then there was this shirt and I thought that's the one I'm gonna wear and that's kind of the way haunted bookshop works it's comfortable it's like an old friend and I know not everybody likes it but but I think I think the goal for I, I, this, this is just me being goofy. I don't really think there are any goals in pipe smoking, but if there were a goal in pipe smoking, it would be to find your that blend that for you is like putting on an old comfortable shirt. That that I believe is when you can say, okay, I'm I'm done. I can stop learning now. Never stop learning, but but you've achieved about. All you could reasonably hope to achieve. If you can say this is it, this is the one. Yeah, you should be happy. And that's not to say it's not going to change. You know, I might uh, come on here next week and say, I can't believe I ever smoked this junk. I don't see it happening, but it could. Taste change, people change. But as I get older, and I know a lot of you are older than me, um, comfort is important. And I don't mean like I got to have a big soft cushy chair because my bones ache and things like that. I mean, I don't want to put myself in situations that are stressful, that are uh, require excessive effort. <laughs> I don't mind working, but I don't want to do stupid work. Um, I guess it's a sense of having paid your dues and wanting to enjoy the uh, the fruits of your labor a bit. Yeah, comfort is important, but not until you get old enough. You know, you young whippersnappers aren't allowed to be comfortable. So. I've been thinking a lot. I want to make a video on this concept of mastery, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. Um, it's something I've been interested in for a while now. The interest actually comes from outside of pipe smoking, so it's, it's really got very little to do with that in essence, but it, it plays into pipe repair, pipe carving, you know, all, all these aspects of what we do, and ultimately to pipe smoking. So I thought it'd be interesting to explore that topic a bit and what I mean by mastery is uh, at least my current thought on it is the, the process that you go through the, the path that you take in developing a skill and that's any skill you know any any skill at all and I've been thinking a lot about this and I'm not ready to really delve into it because I still there's some stuff I want to understand better in particular I, I discovered today when I was looking for images that I could use for the, uh, the thumbnail, I discovered that there's actually a whole branch of education called mastery learning that I was not aware of, and I'm afraid that it might be more of this new math stuff and all that, and I certainly don't want to promote that. Uh, although it might be wonderful, I just don't know anything about it. Uh, and there certainly is a, you know, sort of new age self-helpy kind of mastery thing that 
I, that's not what I'm thinking of either. I'm thinking of craftsmanship, mastering a craft, mastering a skill. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking about that. And, you know, if you, if you, if you really strip it down, so forget about everything you do and everything that you think you are. You're an individual, right? We can pretty much say that you, you, I exist. I can say that you can say that you exist. And then the next question is, why? What, what am I doing here? And my answer to that is pretty simple. I'm, I'm a religious person, so I think that I'm here to uh, serve God and get to heaven. That's my reason. Uh, you may have. A very different one. It doesn't matter. It, it, for for this conversation, it doesn't matter at all. But the point is that that for me, there's a very well defined path to that goal. And I, I'm not going to say that I stay on the straight and narrow all the time because I don't. But you know, I I know where I'm going. I I don't need to stop and ask for directions for that. I might sometimes need to be told, hey, you're veering off course, but I know my destination, right? That's actually rare in life, if you think about it. You know, how, how often can you say, I know exactly where I'm going to be with this undertaking in five years, 10 years, 20 years? It's hard. You know, we hope. We can hope, but to know what the goal really is, to really understand that. Now, let's take marriage as an example. Something very important that we may or may not engage in, but you know, marriage, you, you, you've decided that you're going to join your life to another person's life and travel that road together. You know, the road that I was talking about earlier. And now, you, in some sense, are responsible for, if, if you if you go with my version of reality, where I believe we're going somewhere, you're, you're responsible to love that person along that path so that they get there with you. And they have that responsibility to you. And so, okay, but what does that really look like? You know, it's not the same thing as saying, I'm going to be a good person and follow this set of rules to to get to heaven now it's another person and people are complicated and you gotta you don't know what's going on you gotta trust uh you've gotta love and you gotta have faith and it just it the complexity is is so much greater and it's so much harder and it's an ill-defined process okay so we're not going to talk about any of that anymore <laughs> Because I'm, I'm not, I'm neither qualified nor do I think there's any clear answers to it. But what about the the smaller goals? Yeah. I want to, I want to run a five k. Uh, I want to work on small engines so that I can repair my leaf blower. I want to learn how to restore pipe stems. I want to learn how to make a pipe. And ultimately, I, I want to learn how to be the best pipe smoker I can be. I want to learn how to cook Chinese food. And you get the idea. There, there's, there's millions of things that you can sit down and you can say, I want to do this thing. I want, I want to be as good as I can be at this particular thing. So how does that happen? How do we, you know, it, there's different paths, right? There's different, and I think a lot of us have gone over, gone through this in the past year and a half because we had time, you know, so uh, maybe you decided that this was the, the, t the best time to learn Mandarin. And, and that's what you've been doing. And how how did you take that path of mastery? You know, how did you did you find somebody to teach you? Did you rely on uh, 
you know, some virtual training type thing? Did you just get a book? Is it possible to learn a language from a book? I, I don't know. Uh, did, did you move to China and immerse yourself? Is there one path? And if there is one path, is there one guide on that path? No, it's, it's interesting to think about. I think the answer is no. I think the answer is almost universally no. And that's important because if the answer is almost universally no, then the answer must be the, the, the answer to how do you get to the point of mastery must be ill-defined. If there is not one path, if there's not one guide, then the answer has to be ill-defined. And you can see how complicated this this topic is getting and, and hopefully understand why I started off with the religious point of view because that's the one place where I think the path is well-defined. Um, but how do I best clean a pipe stem? How do I become the best pipe stem restorer I can be? There's no path to that. And there's no person that can tell you, right? No, I can't tell you. I can tell you how I restore a pipe stem, but I can't tell you how you can best restore a pipe stem. That answer, that answer is in you. Right? It's not in anyone else. It's not, it's not written down somewhere. Only you can discover how you can be the best at a particular thing, whether it be restoring a pipe stem or learning a new language or cooking French food. Only you can figure out what is the best you at doing that, and therefore only you know how to get there. It's complicated. It really is. And and it seems like such a simple topic and now they're they're making it more difficult because they're using it to uh you know identify different educational systems and words can get away from you sometimes. Uh, you think you know what they mean. And then you find out the meaning's changed, or um, you know, a whole new use of that word has evolved. I could go on about word corruption for a long time, but I won't. Things like taking a noun and turning it into a verb. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, I know language evolves. I get that. It's not supposed to be set in stone. It's a beautiful living thing, and, and we should, for the most part, let it evolve. But at the same time, you got to have some rules. You know, you got to, or else we're not going to be able to communicate. You have noticed when I'm using the various uh, things on my phone, the, the Instagram, the um, the YouTube app, the uh, text app, the you know all the things, oh, the Gmail, anything that I type into, you know, it has the autocorrect stuff. Well, it has over the years become less and less particular about certain things. Like if you if you type "don't" d o n apostrophe t and you leave out the apostrophe, it will ignore that now. That's okay. If you type it in with a semicolon instead of an apostrophe, which is easy to do if you got fat fingers and you don't know how to type, it'll still ignore it. So it's now okay to spell don't with a semicolon. <laughs> Very strange. That's lowering our standards, and that's the opposite of mastery. That's Deciding, I, I don't want to waste the time to master that, so I'm going to just change what it's called. You know, it's no longer a desirable skill. It's something I don't need to do.
And you can do that. You know, you can... You can decide I don't need to know Mandarin. I don't need to know Mandarin. You know, that's okay. The problem comes when you then turn around and say, however, I do speak it. Because you don't. <laughs> and and that's, that's a problem. You know, if you start lowering the goal and then claiming that it's the same as it used to be, the world starts to fall apart pretty quickly. Well, that's enough uh, philosophical rambling for one day, I think. I hope you found that interesting. It's, it's just one of these things that's been going around in my head. And I don't know, maybe, maybe another couple weeks I'm going to do a, a, a more pipe smoking related uh, or pipe centric video about ma mastery. Uh, but not, not too soon because I got a lot that I got to study up on. As anyone who lived through the past 15 minutes can attest to. Uh, this is going out, I think. Hmm. Okay. So, for the remainder of the weekend, since it's raining, I don't know what plans my wife has. Um, I'm going to try to clean up a bit down here. I just finished up a three pipe set and had another uh, pipe that I, it turns out I could not do the work on, so I returned that. Um, and I'm waiting for the next couple of pipes to come in, so I've got a little bit of free time. I might do a fun project. Uh, I might do a cob project. So, and if I do, I'm going to try to video it. So there might be a Cobb mod video in the not too distant future. I haven't done one of those in a long time. Anyway, I'll get off to work on that. I'll let you all get back to your Sundays. I hope you're having a fantastic one. Hope your weekend was great, and I hope the week ahead is even better. So you all take care, take care of one another, and until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.